the land restoration is coming along very well. The tunnel looks beautiful, just powder coated freshly. We're going to get into these bogey wheels. Now these are all in very bad condition. You can see that, see all that cracking right there? That's just old, that's old rubber. These are probably original, actually they are original because they're still riveted on. They haven't been replaced by screws and nuts, so they're definitely the originals. The cross shafts in here, look at that. All dry, worn out, I'm gonna replace those. I'm gonna replace these bogey wheels, the bearings, everything, the springs. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. And the best news is all of these parts are available from Kimpex. The bogey wheels, inner and outer caps, bearings, cross shaft, spring, not only for the Elan, but for your old Polaris, your old Articat. They have pretty much everything you're gonna to need to rebuild your oldie and keep it running. That order from Kimpex, you can pretty much go to any place that sells boating hardware, skidoo parts, snowmobile parts, uh, motorcycle parts, Yamaha dealers, snowmobile dealers of any sort, they all have a Kimpex catalog underneath their counter. Go in, you can order what you need, you can go online, check out their website, kimpex.ca for now, and in January it turns to kimpex.com. You can check out their part numbers online, call your dealer, order it right up. It's very easy to do. So let's get these rebuilt. I've got three sets of bogies. They're a little dirty to do, but you know what? They're not that hard. If you have all the proper equipment set up, easy peasy. Doing a lot in here. We usually don't shoot on this side. We usually use the studio side, but the vice is right here. The first thing I usually do, I use my vise, clamp them down, and I take out these little grease nipples. They're a little easier to do right now than when you have the cap off. And you're dealing with some pretty old dirty grease here. So I have a lot of old rags around. You're just going to need to reuse these old grease nipples unless you see a problem with them. Dirty old things. Once I've got those grease dimples off, I just come in through the back side of the wheel here. They're all riveted in. You just drill them out. Pretty much any size drill bit will do it. cap off. Now you can reuse these old caps in some circumstances, but you know what, if you want that nice look, that nice customized look, or the freshly rebuilt look, then you're going to want to use these nice new fresh ones from Kimpex. So what I do is I just use an old puller that I have. You can use a, you know, a tie rod end puller if you have one. Something that just fits around the outside of the bearing. This here has nice little hooks on it. And I use a socket just a little bit smaller than the inside of the bearing. Put it in there. And I tighten it up. Now you gotta make sure that the bearing, I just sort of give it a little snug. Now you gotta make sure that the socket is actually going on nice and straight. And that it's smaller than the bearing or it's gonna get wedged in there. And that's it. So that makes your life a lot easier, especially if you use a little impact gun like that. Pops the bearings out in no time. Eight more to do. You don't want to crush these too hard because the ones pre-1972 are actually thinner and they bend quite easily. All your lands come with this single bogey up front. It's a little thicker than most, uh, just because it takes a little bit more abuse up there, right? I'm going to do something a little differently. 
I've got some new old stock arms. I'm going to use these instead. I want four bogies up in the front. It's going to be a little better than three. You know, Keely's riding these sleds. Some of the adults are riding the sleds. So I want a little bit more support in there. So I'm going to use these new old stock ones. I'm going to rebuild these. I picked these up at a flea market. It cost me a couple bucks. And one thing you're going to want to do, I'm going to be changing these springs up with the Kimpex supplied springs. There's a little metal tab that bends over the spring and holds it in place. On this side, it's more or less a little pocket sleeve kind of thing. It just sort of slips in. But this one you need to get out. Now, when you take that out, you're just going to use a hammer and a punch. You're just going to move it out of the way. You're only going to move it enough to get the spring out. You don't want to flatten it right out or you're going to break it. I always keep those old springs just in a box, just in case I bust one and I need one. Right on. So Kimpex supplied everything I need to rebuild these. I've got these new inner halves, nice and shiny. I've got a new bearing. When you install the bearing, you're going to see that there's no grease in it and there's a seal on the back side of it. So what you're going to want to do is we're going to press these into place. Now you can do this with a vise or you can do it with a press. It's just a, basically a kind of a machine fit. It goes on very easily. But you want to make sure that the seal goes to the inside. So when you press grease through the nipple, it actually will coat all that and then it'll slip around the back and come out the inside here. That's where you're going to notice it. Now it's time to start putting these together. I always love when things come together. But you know, there's some old grease on these and there's a little bit of surface rust. So I'm going to use some oil eater here. Get all this old grease off, soak this stuff for a minute. Then I'm going to take it outside and give it a quick paint job. Get them all nice and cleaned up. It'll last another 42 years. There we go. The oil eater works really well when degreasing belly pans and these old school bogey wheels. There's a lot of grease buildup on these over the years, which also keeps it from rusting, I must say, but not very good when you want to paint it. These old bogey suspensions are pretty fun. You know, I've been out with all my buddies, they're riding their newer sleds and I just take them and wheel them right down the side of the road with those bogeys, it doesn't really matter. You're not going to hurt your sliders because you don't have any. They get a kick out of it. But there is a little bit more maintenance. Just going to make sure you keep them greased well, and then they'll last you a long time. These are 40 years. These are all original, original bearings. It's hard to find something to cut through that old grease when you're rebuilding your sled. Check out this oil eater orange online. They have all kinds of cleaning products, works really well. So I'm going to take these outside, give them a quick little spray paint, get them all cleaned up, put them all back together. So I've got everything I need to put these bogies back together. I've got the other arms drying right now. I gave them a quick coat of paint. I'm going to press on these bearings, show you how easy it is to do it. You know, really, I don't know if you definitely need a press. You could probably just put them on if you had two flat plates and you just tap them on with a hammer. It's not a really tight fit. If you're running down the trail, you notice that one of your wheels fly off, bearing and all. You've lost it. Doesn't mean your whole arm is bad. You can actually fix it. All you need to do is put a new bearing back on and just take a punch once it's on and work it around. Just sort of spread the lip of this over top of the bearing and it'll hold it on just like new. All right, let's get this pressed on. Now, whenever you're pressing something into place, make sure you wear your goggles. And don't forget to put this cap on, the hub cap on the right way. Don't put it backwards. You gotta put it on the right way and then press it on. Don't forget it, because if you do, you gotta take the bearing off again. Make sure you put that seal on the inside.
So I've got both bearings pressed on, seals are to the inside. Got my nice new little wheel here. I'll slip that into place. Clock it so it's on there correctly. Now I've put the little grease nipple on already, a little easier to do when it's in your hand. And just gonna line those up. I went to fasten all, I picked up a bunch of these stainless steel screws. They're pretty easy to install. You just press them right through. And now I have a little stainless steel nut here. I just place it on. You just go around, replace them all. I'm gonna do this, then I'm gonna go get my other arms. They should be dry in a moment. And then we're off to the races. Now you're only going to want to tighten these up a little bit at a time. Make sure that the wheel turns freely as you do it. I sort of do it in a kitty corner pattern, kind of like you're doing the wheels on a car, just to make sure that it goes on flush. You don't want to over tighten these because the rubber will squish out and then you'll put a little bit of extra stress on it and it'll break on you. You're going to want to block off about two to three hours to do this whole job. Have all your tools set up first so you're not running to reach and grab for different things. Just makes life a lot easier. See, I'm, all, I'm only doing these hand tight. Not overdoing it at all. Now, don't forget to use a low temperature grease when you do give it the final greasing. And don't do it with pressure on the wheels. I'll grease it on the bench here before I put it on the sled. Just a little easier to get the grease in when there's no pressure on anything. There we go. All right, I've got everything set up. Bogies are all back together. Everything's tightened up. All I have to do is put a low temperature grease in there. You don't want to put a wheel bearing grease in there, a normal temp, or these wheels will not really turn in the winter. They're going to seize up, they're going to get really tight, you're going to wonder why your land's not moving too fast, and that's going to be the reason. You want to make sure you use a low temp grease. Now this isn't low temp, this is just a normal wheel bearing grease, but I'm going to use that on this cross shaft. I find that you know a little heavier grease on here isn't a bad thing. It's not a wheel bearing. These uh, axle sections are only just kind of moving like this pretty slowly so a thicker grease on there is not a bad thing. Now it's a good idea to change out these springs. Kimpex sells these as well, that's where this one's from. The old ones on there have taken a lot of abuse. It's time to change them out and you know what they might be sagging quite a bit. So you're gonna get a little bit of extra ride height and some more suspension out of that land. You know you're gonna get maybe two and a half inches instead of two inches of travel. You just slip it over top of the arm and into the groove and then there's a little sleeve in here where you slip that into. And you're going to want to grease up your axle shaft here really well. I'm pretty liberal with this when I grease these up. The more the merrier. Now, you know, you might wonder how often to grease those bogies. Grease them often. I know some people will only do it maybe once a season, but you're going to pay for it because those bearings are going to wear out and you're going to have to replace them all. They're going to get sloppy and they're going to start popping off on you. They're going to seize up, all kinds of troubles. So you're going to want to make sure that you grease them on a regular basis. You just slide that shaft in, clean that up. Now all I have to do is pound over this little tab here that holds that spring down.
Well, there we go. Now I've got this Elan suspension, bogey wheels all rebuilt, all ready to go. Good for another 40 years. I got all my parts at Kimpex. Make sure you check out Kimpex.ca or Kimpex.com coming up in the near future. They're going to have all the parts that you need to rebuild your suspension and many more parts to help you rebuild this whole lamp, as you're going to see in the next future videos. And make sure you check out my next set of videos. I'm going to rebuild that front driver, the rear drivers, get everything installed with that track. Make sure you check us out on Facebook for our cool giveaways. Make sure you check out Kimpex too. Thanks for watching. Nothing at all Aren't you sick of promises that I